All right, guys, he's in here. Welcome back to the channel. Now, on this video, I'm not going to say welcome to another Street Fighter Joe video, although this does relate a bit to Street Fighter Joe, but it really just ref refers to the mobile industry in general. Now, this is something that I've spoke about before, but off the back of watching this video from Charlie today, Moist Critical, those that don't know, um, is basically talking about a developer who actually revealed the goods and told people exactly how much he made or didn't make from his free-to-play title. So I'm going to start with the setup here, allow this to kind of play a little bit because it's going to encompass a lot of what I'm about to say and I feel like if I just let this point of view play out it'll allow me to elaborate a little bit more on my point of view here so let this play and we'll come back this is banana dev talking about paint warfare a passion project he developed over the course of thousands of hours he followed a very standard free-to-play model you know this is the kind of stuff ubisoft and ea has what dreams about it's just run-of-the-mill normal free-to-play microtransactions where it's DLC cosmetics and in-game purchases. He's not trying to reinvent the condom here, it is a tried and true method, and with 750,000 downloads while having microtransactions, I imagine most of you assume that this was a home run, he hit it out of the park financially. So it's important to note here that this basically sounds like what people always claim they want from a free-to-play game, what a free-to-play game ultimately should be it's not pay to win it's things like cosmetics non-game changing downloads things that you can implement in game maybe to speed you up but nothing that an average player is not going to be able to get their hands onto so it's not like buying an op weapon that you can only get through cash not buying an op character that type of thing it's again what a lot of at least mobile free-to-play players say that would make the best free-to-play games okay so over a total of four years of release, the game has made 4,672 US dollars gross. Now remember, that's three quarters of a million downloads, right? Just to be clear, that's three quarters of a million downloads and it's made $4,672 before deductions, right? And after local taxes like VAT, GST, and also returns, this comes out to 3,812 US dollars. And then Steam takes a 30% cut so the total revenue I take home is 2,668 US dollars and now it's important to note here some of you might wonder how what has this got to do with mobile games these breakdowns are, are pretty much exactly the same Apple takes 30% of revenue that games make Google takes 30% of revenue that games make so these kind of numbers are the same type of numbers that developers are going to be facing when it comes to mobile gaming as well okay 40 cents 2000 so he basically made just over two and a half grand, right? For a game that had, what, 750,000 downloads, okay? Which, to be honest, is a bit of a, a joke, really, right? And to be honest, I think it actually shows a bit of a wider issue with the whole gaming sh sphere in general at the moment, okay? And it's a lot of the reasons why we're seeing the things that we're seeing in a lot of the mobile games that we like, some of the bigger titles that are coming out from companies like EA and stuff like that, why they're nickel and diamond people so much. Now there's just one other thing that Charlie touches on that I'm going to let play before I really let loose with my point of view. And in some ways I, I agree with Charlie, but I do disagree with him quite strongly on a certain point that I I'm going to be getting to pretty much just now, okay? So this part here is, I see the point of where he's coming from, but this is ultimately where I kind of diverge a little bit with why I think differently from from charlie here but now after seeing it from banana dev it starts to paint a pretty clear picture of just how difficult it is to make a sustainable living from game development as like an indie dev and also why so many studios take the safest most generic formulaic games and push them forward because they know there is a built-in audience for it for example ubisoft open worlds I am beyond exhausted of them, I know a lot of people are, but there's a lot of people who aren't, who don't mind getting fed the same vegetables over and over again. It's something that's comforting and something that's familiar to them, so they will keep playing and buying the open world Ubisoft adventures, or really lack thereof an adventure. Now, this this is ultimately where I kind of have a completely different point of view. What Charlie's basically saying there is he, he thinks people just keep regurgitating the same stuff because that's the only things that make money. That, that's not what's happening, okay? Now, if you look at the mobile sphere, where I'd say that most 
free to play games exist okay now obviously you get some on pc but not as many okay the only real free to play driving mobile game a uh, pc game i can think of maybe two is you've got modern warfare and you've got fortnite okay now those two things have something very much in common with each other they like to lean a lot on other ips and things like that particularly fortnite okay and um, now fortnite you don't really pay to win so to speak but you will pay for your favorite character that is something that people will do that's known it's happened for years and years and years but there's there's very few games that follow that formula most games follow the free-to-play formula that mobile gamers are used to and that is your gacha type formula or your pay-to-win type formula and the reason that people keep putting those games out is because as it is shown the vast majority of people despite what they say the vast majority of people will not spend money in free-to-play free games okay so the model has to be you have to target the 1%. Now, we know about this, okay? We know that they have all the data that shows them 99% of players are not going to spend enough money for us to keep this game going. So what we need to do is we need to introduce mechanics, characters, items, and things like that to entice the people who maybe are not as skilled as some of the other players, but if they pay us this money, they will get an advantage and they will be able to beat these other players, aka pay to win, okay? So you give the incentive that if you spend this money, you will be better than this person. doesn't matter that you've maybe not got an understanding of the core mechanics, you've not got a grasp on how well the game plays or how well certain team builds, etc. can go together. You can simply spend money and you can race ahead. Now... I don't like this model, however, I knew this already, but now seeing this kind of backs it up a lot more. This is almost a curse that players have brought on themselves, okay? Because, unfortunately, the vast majority of gamers who have access to a platform that maybe it's not a console, because I still feel like console gamers are still not quite there yet, but mobile, maybe people who are on low-income PC, they want games they don't have to pay for, right? Simple as that. They want free games, okay? With mobile, it's really bad. Companies have tried this. They've brought out full-featured, proper, sometimes it's ports, sometimes it's new games. They've charged a low price for it. Totally good value. And people do not spend the money. The games are fantastic, like, fantastic for four five six dollars but people do not want to pay that four five six dollars they want everything for free okay and because of that that has led to an upturn and more and more developers producing these free to play titles that are not free to play okay they might be free to experience but really to get the full play yeah, you're going to be handicapped in some way, shape, or form. So what they do is they introduce these pay-to-win mechanics because these pay-to-win mechanics are what is going to keep the game going and keep the game thriving, okay? You have so many players that will tell you if companies price things a little bit more appropriately, they would make more money. It's not true, right? They say things like, if I really enjoy a game, I would spend something if the game is also rewarding okay what they're basically saying is if the game isn't too pay to win then if they've enjoyed it for a period of time they'll maybe buy a five ten dollar purchase or whatever okay now that game had seven hundred and fifty thousand downloads right just let that sink in seven hundred and fifty thousand downloads if all of those players played that game and let's say only what fifty percent i'm being probably a bit too generous there but i don't want to try and do any more difficult maths than this right so seven hundred and fifty thousand players that would be what three hundred and seventy five thousand players who maybe liked the game and were happy with the game okay if those players had even made one one dollar purchase that developer would have made three hundred thousand dollars okay they would have made three hundred thousand dollars and we know that's not the case because that player that developer didn't even make five grand okay so the vast majority of people will not spend money okay 
So the aggressive pricing model continues because players as a hive mind, as a general player base outside of your Wales, they really don't want to spend money. They don't. They want the game for free. They want to play the game for free. And to be honest, a lot of players want to experience the full thing for free, which is not a sustainable model, right? And unfortunately, I, I do feel that that's probably a big problem with the gaming industry lately. I think this is why live service games are existing, because they ultimately need a longer revenue stream to justify these development costs, because players just want to know that I've got this one game, I can keep playing this for years and years, months and months. It's not a 15 hour experience that I've paid $60 for and then I can't play it anymore, you know? A lot of people still feel that way and they're the same players who will complain about why are we getting live service games? Why are things so pay to win? Because ultimately the players who are not willing to go out and spend money on games have given birth to this industry and it's now here to stay and I, I don't like it personally. I, I, I don't. I mean, I, f I feel really bad for this developer spent, I think it goes on in this video to talk about how he spent 5,000 hours developing the game and in 5,000 hours he made, I think it works out to like 42 cents an hour for his game. Obviously the guy's quite happy, he's got experience and stuff like that, but to me that seems very silver lining, you know, you're, you're looking for the positives and a negative, um, but realistically, if people are downloading your game, if, if your game has got a lot of playtime, 750,000 hours, and you haven't made money off of it, unfortunately that sends the message to you as the developer that you've not been aggressive enough with your monetization, and that's bad. Like, that is bad. That is why companies like EA, companies like Namkai, Namco Bandai, companies like Square, whenever they bring out their gacha titles, that is why they are always so expensive. Because they know if they don't, it's not worth it. It's not worth them to do it. And I think it's just an unfortunate state of affairs that we have now, due to people who are quite happy to go out and spend 1000 pounds or one thousand dollars on their portable computer that sits in their hand they, they don't want to spend five dollars for a game they want the game for free it's a bit of a weird situation it's a bit of a weird outcome and unfortunately this is now the reality of what we're left with and it's unfortunate because information like this is exactly why developers will go see this is why we don't make our game less expensive this is why we don't have cheaper microtransaction this is why our games isn't cosmetics only because they know they will not make money anyway let me know what you think in the comments down below interesting video go and check it out on moist criticals channel charlie and i'll catch you in the next one peace